So initially, I was going to come up here and talk to you about Spotify's infrastructure transition to Kubernetes and to cloud-native apps. And then I realized that I was going to say about 80% of the same things Sarah did and use the exact same architecture slides. So instead, I want to talk about a different transition that we're trying to lead at Spotify. And that's transitioning to being a really strong, active member of this community and to try to push all the rest of you guys to do the same thing. So I think we all agree that free and open source software is a really amazing thing. But at least in my opinion, most of us are kind of pretty bad at it. And I say that because I think the greatest thing about free and open source software isn't necessarily contributing upstream and the code itself or necessarily even adopting all the technology. It's really engaging with this community. And I don't think Spotify is necessarily any better and is probably worse than many of the companies here, but we're trying really hard to get better and to actively commit to getting better. So first, a little bit about Spotify. Uh, we don't really do open software. We're not a uh, Red Hat or a CoreOS type company whose kind of core business is in open source software. We do highly personalized streaming music. Uh, we have very autonomous teams, hundreds of them across the company, uh, thousands of services and thousands of engineers and hundreds of people in a technology platform team that is supposed to support all of that and create the tools and systems and structures that everyone in the company uses. So we have very rough, rough alignment across the org, but no real authority. There isn't someone that can just kind of put their foot down and say, you must all go, I don't know, blog or tweet or uh, go to conferences. It's really up to every one of those individual teams to decide what they do and how active they are about it. But my team in infrastructure and operations at Spotify in those couple hundred people on technology platform is trying really hard to kind of be a trendsetter across the company and engaging. Uh, one thing we've been doing a lot of right now is moving to cloud and cloud native technology, of course. We kind of forklifted all of our data center software into cloud, and now we're really figuring out what the next steps are. We're working on engaging with the community, and we have a whole lot of kind of problems inside our company that I'm sure are very similar to what you guys have of aligning with on technology and moving much faster and scaling. But the big question for us was really kind of how do we get started with this? How do we get started engaging with people? How do we get started being a part of this? And we had a lot of people in the company that had done very interesting things internally, but at any given moment felt like, I haven't really done anything that exciting. Uh, why would anyone want to listen to the way I built this thing as compared to what everyone else did? And then because we're such a distributed company and uh, have such kind of rough alignment, no one really could be sure that they're the right person to talk about it. Maybe there's someone in another office or somewhere down the street that a similar thing still within Spotify, but is cooler. So like that person should talk instead of me. And then we really didn't know who to engage with. I mean, I say engage with the community, but who or what is kind of the community? So for example, when we were starting to work with Kubernetes, uh, we really wanted to talk to some customers uh, that had done some of the things that we were doing or that were kind of experts at it so we could ask them how they did it, how they solved some of the same problems. But we didn't know who to ask. We didn't know, uh, can I just pick up the phone and call some random company that I know is using uh, Kubernetes and have them actually answer the phone and talk to us? And of course, the same thing for every one of these other things, whether it's gRPC or Istio or monitoring tools like Prometheus or anything else. Um, of course, we have our existing providers, our cloud provider, our existing on-prem infrastructure providers, all of that. But uh, they're still not necessarily the right people to be able to connect us to the best users of all of these things. So the place where I started was really just kind of just sharing our story, just starting to build relationships. So, coming out and trying to be more, more public about what we're doing. Uh, like yesterday, uh, James, one of our engineers from New York, and I spoke for a while about how we're doing this transition and how we've done it in an attempt to just figure out who else is out there in similar places that would love to talk to us. Um, but even before this, there were really a couple of things that convinced me that we absolutely have to do this. And to me, it really fell into these kind of three obvious buckets of getting support, getting guidance, and really just figuring out what's out there. And I have some kind of some stories that really convinced me on how great this is. Uh, the first thing for me in this community was starting to play with, with Kubernetes mid last year with one of our customer teams. And they really wanted to figure out a way to get an ingress controller that can do ingress to pods running in two different namespaces. And most ingress controllers can't do this. But we did find that Voyager can do this, or at least Voyager was documented to be able to do this. But we couldn't make it work to save our lives. And of course, we did the normal developer thing, like go on Google, look around. 
go on Stack Overflow, look around, dig around GitHub issues on the open source project. And none of that really solved our problem. So we did this very unnatural thing of jumping on their Slack channel and just asking people. And within about five or 10 minutes, we walked through on Slack in real time what the problem was with someone from Maps Code, and they just walked us through it. And it turned out it was completely our fault, and we had our back set up wrong, and that's why nothing was working. But we have no support channel with them. We have no prior relationship with them. They have no idea who any of us are, but they just happily IM'd with us and fixed this whole thing. And to me, coming from a place where I had worked a lot of enterprise solutions and worked through support channels and all of this, this was amazing. Uh, so then I really, kind of, I really wanted to do more. Uh, there were a whole bunch of places where, as opposed to this example, we just really didn't know what to do or what exact technology to use. So we just needed guidance. Um, the most recent example is for me was uh, compliance things. Like we have a lot of services that are under IT general control uh, compliance requirements, and we really want to get them running in Kubernetes. But I couldn't easily find anyone out there that was doing similar things to what we were doing, running them in Kubernetes, and running them with ITGC compliance. So I just effectively kind of emailed whoever I could find, whether it was a CNCF end user community or some other Kubernetes users, just to feel out what's out there. And on the one hand, I don't have a great answer, like somebody or their emailed me and said, here's our magical tool that does everything you need. We're still in a place where we're figuring out what to do. But on the other hand, we got some amazing stories of people that come kind of 80% of the way there or are building similar things. And more than that, we got some amazing connections, whether it was people from huge companies like Capital One or Zolando happily reaching out to us to talk about whatever details of their infrastructure or kind of really important people around CNCF like Alexis Richardson and people from Weave happily coming out to like demo some of their products and see if they could work. So then I took another step back and said, there are some areas where we really just don't even know what's out there. Like in the monitoring space, of course, we're familiar with things like Prometheus, but we have a whole bunch of interesting monitoring requirements that span at our kind of scale and with the way that our org is structured, where it didn't feel like just deploying Prometheus the way that it uh, kind of exists as the open source project was going to work for us. And I really wanted to find someone that kind of knew enough about Prometheus that would walk me through it. But again, I didn't feel like I could just kind of email one of the maintainers or someone that really runs Prometheus. So I tried to feel out who I could talk to. In an email, some of my connections, uh, they kind of immediately responded and just connected me to Julius. And I had this moment where I was like, well, but he does like important Prometheus things with real people that are using it. Why would he talk to me? And of course, we exchanged a whole bunch of very detailed emails where he gave us a lot of great tips on what we could, could do and what he would recommend, and all from just kind of reaching out and trying to go, get somewhere. And at that point, I was really hooked. At that point, I said, we absolutely have to be a part of this. We have to use this across the company. We have to get a lot more than just our platform involved in reaching out to the community and talking to people. Of course, I pitched joining CNCF. You saw on the slide, we are now an end user member. Uh, but even there, kind of, I was immediately offered calls with people from the Linux Foundation and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation to talk to them about things we want to get out of it and how the foundation could help us the most. And then there were a bunch of uh, kind of big or smaller scale things that I saw that were really interesting. I mean, we had uh, really simple things like quick hallway conversations at conferences like this, like at DockerCon, we had a, uh, a grad student that got connected to Istio core devs. And again, this is the kind of thing where you would never think you can just suddenly have a connection in the core of what is potentially the hottest project right now in this space, but we did. Um, we do a regular offsite among our platform team. And I just picked a, I basically just looked up the CNCF ambassadors page, found Paul Burt from CoreOS on that list because he was in New York near where we we're having the, the offsite. And I just emailed him and said, hey, I'd love to have someone that can talk about CNCF to our platform. And he was excited. He was glad to do it. He came. He talked to us. He had a great talk. And it was basically for the cost of an email and a cab ride. And then there were things that really kind of shifted the way I look at this whole community as well. Like on my very first call with the end user community after we joined, I listened to Morgan Stanley talk about details of their infrastructure and open source pieces of the way that they do container orchestration. And the kind of 10 years ago me that worked in enterprise software never imagined that a large financial company like Morgan Stanley would ever tell anyone what they do infrastructure, much less open source it and tell everyone in the community on a call. And so that really told me that we have to emphasize that we're all, just about everyone in this room, we're all facing very similar problems. We're all building, debugging, deploying, operating, containerized microservices at 
some scale. Sure, we have different scale requirements, we have slightly different software, but at the end, it's very similar problems. And chances are, whatever problem is keeping you up at night right now, where you're doing the most work on, there's lots of people here, but at least someone here working on similar things. And we just have to find those people and reach out to them and work on those things together, rather than working on them on our own every time, and not isolating ourselves. And even if you are that one person that has some problem that no one else is working on, you might just become a thought leader in that area as soon as the next group of people hit that problem and realize you've already solved it and been fairly public about it. So back to Spotify for a second. Our problems, like I said, a lot, we have a lot of scale problems. We're figuring out how to do reliability in the cloud. Uh, with things like uh, GDPR, we have a, to kind of figure out how to re-architect some of our data storage. We are hundreds of, of uh, millions of users, tens of thousands of data pipelines per day, multiple mobile apps, thousands of services. But at the end of the day, it's still we're figuring out how high we can scale a cluster, what we can do for federation across multiple clusters, how we convert our old uh, configuration management to a system that works cloud native. All of the same kind of problems everyone else talks about. And we have a long history of kind of attempting to engage with the community, of open sourcing things or talking about open source, but not nearly as much success of really engaging with the community. We've done things like set up an open source program office like entity. Uh, we've followed many of the two groups' policies, but we've never really engaged with any of those communities. The CNCF is the first foundation we've really joined, and we've been a fairly large kind of name in software for years. Uh, and to me, that's because we're all mostly engineers. And for us, the software thing is really easy. But talking to people is really hard. And we need to fix that. Because if we talk to people, we can make the building software part significantly easier. And the, some of the uh, numbers that we just saw from Cloud Foundry, actually, we've seen very similar things internally. We've done a few. Uh, surveys internally over the past few years, and we very often hear from a lot of individual engineers that they really want to contribute more, or they think Spotify doesn't contribute enough to the ecosystem. But we, and I don't know how unique this is, but we're in a place where most of our management at all levels is extremely supportive of us being active in the community, and us joining, and us reaching out, and us speaking, or blogging, or just talking to more people, learning more. We have a core kind of cultural value of learning from others in the industry. So a lot of that actually giving back and contributing is on us individuals, the same individuals that are answering these surveys and saying that Spotify's not giving back enough. And it's easy for the leaders in the team to get that survey and then allocate money to donate to some foundation or some group, but it's much harder for the leadership to kind of get all the individuals to suddenly kind of be more active and learn more from others. But that's really where we are now. And I think we can all do better. I know Spotify can do better, but I think we can all do better. And I use this analogy of raising your hand, but we can call it sitting at the table or speaking up or whatever we want to call it. Because to me, I think all the same people that answer in those surveys that they want Spotify to give back more are the same exact people that really would be the ones giving back, but they're afraid, they're nervous. They say that same thing of, I haven't done anything. Uh, I mean, we have people that have built our own internal monitoring system that monitors the incredible scale that I just listed to you that don't really feel like there's much to talk or write about there, where they've built this amazing system. And I think even if it's not the greatest monitoring system in the world, it's a really interesting thing for people to hear about. So to them and kind of anyone else, I keep saying kind of stop being worried about not being good enough and reach out. And there's a lot of kind of chop wood and carry water in this area too that I'm trying to bring to Spotify, where if you just kind of write about the one thing you did, or join the one SIG or the one working group that's closest to what you're doing, or maybe come talk at a conference that is related to it, but you're a little bit nervous, you might be that one thing that really gets us over the, over the cliff. I mean, just with this, I've had a couple of people within Spotify reach out to me and say, people that I'd never met before, that they heard I was doing this through some channel or another, and that motivated them to suddenly just submit a paper or to write a more public blog post or do something. And it really starts with just doing some of these hard things, like ask a question, be that first one to reach out, or try to answer someone's question. If you're, say, at a conference like this and you hear an interesting talk and someone asks something that you know you can answer, connect with them. Maybe they'll suddenly change the way you work on this problem for a long time. 
Because like I said, it really is about a lot more than just contributing upstream or working in the open. The easy things that you can do by just interacting with github.com. It's really about interacting with all the people, especially all the people in this room while you're here. And I really want to hammer on this point. The same, they haven't done anything yet. It's really just imposter syndrome. Like I said, we all know the warts in our systems. We know the mistakes we've made. We know the places where it really hasn't worked. Um, we know the moments where we think, I don't belong there. I don't belong on that stage. That's the stage Kelsey Hightower was on yesterday. Who am I to share a stage with Liz Rice? But you probably have done plenty of interesting enough things for people to want to hear about them. And the same thing goes for any other medium, whether it's medium or Twitter or anything else. Everyone does this. And there are millions of cartoons making the same point. And this, to me, is the biggest example. This is Linus's email where he first um, released Linux. And I, he obviously didn't bold these parts. I highlighted these. But he's highlighting parts where he's basically saying that it's just a hobby. This thing won't really be big. It won't be professional. And it's not prodable. It'll only work on his machine. On the other hand, if you listen to Red Hat's Command Line Heroes podcast, you'll hear, you'll hear Saran Yabarik say that he was literally a real-life Luke Skywalker that was taking down the Empire with this one message. And you never know if the thing you're releasing, the thing that you think isn't prodable, might change the world for thousands of people. So again, going back to that starting line, I think we can do better. I think we need to do better. But I think the starting line that I used initially isn't quite the right, the, the right analogy. To me, it's more of a diving board. Once you jump in, you're in, and you get, all, you get so deep in this community that you can't give it up. Like I said, I got hooked. And of course, being Spotify, I have to bring this back to music. Last week, I was in a Spotify conference, and we had someone interviewing a musician, a producer, actually. And she was, asked, she was talking a little bit about how she got some of the most interesting gigs she worked on, some of the most interesting meetings that she, that she had, some of the most interesting performances she did, really with some of her idols, people that she wasn't sure she could ever work with or that ever really would have wanted to work with her. And the message that she gave us at that point was really just, she had the guts to ask. She had a person that she idolized and she sent them an email and said, hey, I want to work with you. Or some event that was happening and she said, hey, I really want to be a part of this event. And more often than not, just that one moment of reaching out and saying she wanted to be a part of something got her into it. So that's what I want to leave you with. I think like her, we just need to have the guts to ask and to ask everyone else here. Thank you.